Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23. And it turns out that I've been doing something wrong. With the Realistic Progression Tech Tree, what I should be doing, and Nathan Kell, the person who manages the Realism Overhaul pack and many of the mods that are involved like Deadly Reentry and Stretchy SRB, left a comment about this. With the Realism Progression Light Tech Tree, I should be using the Reaching for the Stars engine pack instead of real engines which normally comes with Realism Overhaul. And that's the reason why I've been getting these huge rockets right at the start instead of properly sized rockets that would suit what I'm actually doing right now in this stage of the tech tree. So uh, that's sort of my fault. Uh, I didn't read the uh, posts properly. but. Now I have a little conundrum because because I don't think it's going to be suitable to turn to the Reach for the Stars engine pack and there are a few reasons for that. Now why would I want to? Well one thing that uh, is noted is of course the size of the engines are totally uh, incorrect for this stage in the tech tree. So that's one problem. Uh, another problem is that a few of the engines, actually really just this one that I've been using a lot, uh, is not configured for Engine Igniter under the Realism Engine tech tree. Now with the latest update to uh, Real Engines, um, most of them, I think all but this one is configured for Engine Igniter um, with everything updated. I think that's true. So, so it's not that big a problem, except of course the SRBs, those are just one light anyway. So and they're all configured for real fuels, I think, as well. So, that's not a huge problem. Then there's the reasons why I can't switch to the uh, Reaching for the Stars engine pack. Now again, if you are going to play with the Realistic prog Progression Tech Tree, you should play with the, with the Reaching for the Stars engine pack. The reason why I'm not going to is, first of all, the goal of this whole series is to unlock the Saturn V, which was made with real engines. And the engines are totally different between real engines and reaching for the stars. So they're, they're not only named differently, the, uh, these are named after the real engines in real life. The J2 is modeled after the J2, it's sized for the J2, it's thrust is that of the J2, and the J2 is the rocket that was used in the second stage of the Saturn V. But the reaching for the stars engine pack does not have such an engine. It doesn't have, uh, this model is used for a different engine that's a different size with different stats. So if I really want to unlock all the parts I need for the Saturn V, uh, I, the Reaching for a Stars pack would necessitate me to go to that engine pack and then switch back to real engines in order to uh, open the Saturn V. And it just doesn't have the right flow, it, the premise sort of breaks down because now I have a J2 and I can show you what I could do with a J2 even without building the Saturn V, which is something that I want to do. Okay, I want to see what kind of use I can put this engine to, and uh, and so that's important to me. The second reason is, of course, all of these engines you can look up on Wikipedia. These are real engines, they have their real stats, and when it says Lunar Module Descent Engine, that is something that you can look up on Wikipedia that exists in real life. Okay, and so that feels a little bit better to me when I'm trying to uh, create uh, this particular series. The rockets in the Reaching for the Stars pack have very good stats, they're very uh, realistic, if you will, but they're not real engines. So there's a gap there. And so so when I see here that uh, the, well actually it's this one that I'm using right now, the LR-89 is uh, a booster engine used in the Atlas launch vehicle, I, I like that. I, I like that and I want to continue doing that. I'm sure I'm going to be encountering other problems with doing it this way, but uh, I, I want to continue like this. Now that leaves a little bit of an issue here. This particular rocket is not configured, right? So it's got 45 thrust and it is really not configured for uh, for real uh, for the realism overhaul at all because it's got liquid fuel and oxidizer it doesn't have engine ignitions so it's totally wrong. This one is a monopropellant engine, but then it's it's 
configured as monopropellants, so that's not really engine uh, uh, realism overhaul either. So, what can I do? I recall a sounding rocket that used some of these sustainer engines in a cluster. I forget which rocket it was. I know there is such a rocket. So what we can do, maybe, uh, let's see if it's configured for real engines. That means, yeah, yeah, okay, so real engines allows you to put an arbitrary number in a node. So what we need is, it looks like, this is 45 divided by, let me just say, uh, uh, so I need 7. I need about 7. So let's actually have uh, 1 in the center. Uh, can you snap to the center, please? This is important. <laughs> Yes. So yeah, again, uh, the proper way to do this is to use the Reaching for the Stars pack, but I'm not going to because I'm, I've got my little premise, I'm sticking to it. But now we have a stage that is configured with uh, Engine Igniter, and configured with... Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I think this was configured with Engine Igniter, uh, but uh, it just doesn't have any ignition stuff. That's funny. Because this is part of the... What you call it? Uh, stock alike pack, and Engine Igniter covers the stock alike pack. Anyway, it's got real fuels, so I'm satisfied. So let's dump this one that doesn't have real fuels. And now I have to very carefully make sure that this attaches to the center one and not the side ones. Aha. Okay. That should be good. So now we have a more suitable rocket, and let's see now. The way it's reaching up like this, I don't know if I like that, so... Oh, one other tip that Nathan Kell gave me was that if you hold down shift and resize things, it uh, speeds things up. So uh, let's say this is like this, so if I hold shift, it goes faster. So that's an interesting note, because uh, especially with the width of the tanks, it takes a long, lot of uh, mouse wiggling in order to get it right, so that's a helpful tip. Um, okay. Now, we had a little bit of trouble because when I dropped the fairings on this, the whole thing came apart. For now, I'm not going to worry about that. Let's just test this out. Uh, okay, here's what I'm going to do. Oh, and my staging is all wrong, isn't it? Let's see, that one is supposed to be there. But these six definitely should go here. Right, yeah. So, the thing is, and if it would let me get a hold of these fairings and pull them apart, yes. Okay. So there's one more experiment that can be run on this one, and that's the sample return experiment. And actually the sample return doesn't require us to get into orbit, right? Uh, we can get the 100 points as long as we retrieve this, even if we don't get into orbit. Okay, this situation was just stupid. Okay, let me let go of it. It's not even letting me attach it anymore. Why doesn't it let me let go of it? Is there somewhere where I can attach to this thing so that I can at least set it aside for a bit? Wow. Okay, well, this... Oh, darn. Okay, well, I'm going to have to reload this and get those Corporal Sustainers back on. Okay, we've got the Corporal Sustainers back on. I'm just uh, trying to catch up where I was before because this thing was being silly. Okay. Anyway, uh... As I was saying, we can do that one experiment uh, up at altitude, so... And without getting to orbit. So let's not get this into orbit this time. 
um, this, this, the diameter of this is a little bit wider than this. Can we adjust the diameter of this one? Whoa, that's not the direction I wanted to go in. Uh, there, okay. So yeah, let's let's actually do that experiment and try and bring it back before trying to get into orbit. This is a little bit overpowered for that particular mission, uh, but um, yeah, I want to do that. Let's replace the liquid fuel and oxidizer with the ones that the corporal sustainers use, which is amines and nitric acid. Very, very unique. I don't hear that one very often. Let's see what kind of delta V we get out of all this. So this is actually short of uh, orbit right now. Uh, let's let's configure this uh, stay putnik to be orbital at least. Here's the thing: uh, we don't really need to do the experiment in orbit. We just need to go up and go back down and make sure it comes back down safely. What we really need to put into orbit is I shouldn't extend this stage. I should extend this one. What we really need to put into orbit is a satellite to help us communicate. And so this does not really need to go up there. Am I still pretending that I can throttle this engine? Uh, okay, I need to lift that up. Yeah, I'm pretending that I can throttle this engine. Okay, that's unnecessary. That's not an engine that I can mess with in that way. So actually we have this much. So that changes things. So yeah, so this is not the payload that I'm going to be delivering to orbit. This is a payload that I'm going to be just sending up and bringing back down. And perhaps... Wow, the thrust to weight ratio up here is too big though. We really need to extend this stage. Otherwise it's going to be in big trouble. I guess we just have to put everything like this. Now that's going to make it difficult to maintain communication with it. So just in case, I'm going to... well, that wouldn't be very good either way. What's the downrange communication capability of this one? 5,000 kilometers? Will we get 5,000 kilometers when we switch to this stage? We'd probably be quite far into that. Hmm. Should really be using the these procedural fairings. It's only because of the size of the stage that leads me to not use them and use the interstage fairing adapter and sort of cheat like that instead. Hmm. Well, anyway, we're just going up and down this time, so that's not going to be an issue. Let's uh, let's bring it up and see how it works out with... Uh, oh, wait, did I fix the fuel? Yes, I did. Okay. Well, I, it would have uh, not shown me the right Delta V anyway. All right, so we've got it all nice and ready. Let's see if it works just to get that one experiment done and get that 100 science from that. Okay, here it is. Got a half tank of hydrazine, looks like. All right. Throttle is up. SAS is on. And so we're just doing the experiment this time. We're not getting into orbit. But at least it'll let me check the staging to make sure that everything is kosher in that respect. All right. So here we go. And thankfully, uh, now the, the base engine, the one from the Atlas rock, the LR-89, is uh, is a little bit more gentle on the on the ascent, not quite as overpowered, though it's overheating now. Um, hmm. Hopefully that is still just uh, trying to scare me thing and not uh, it's going to blow up thing. 
Though if it does blow up, at least we are... We've actually... We're actually overpowered for this particular mission. Now, we don't need to go downrange too much. Uh, so we don't need to fully do a gravity turn, but I do sort of want to do a little bit of rotation. Yeah, I forget which sounding rocket it was, but there is one that, uh, an early one that uses uh, those uh, 6.7 kilonewton rockets. Like a cluster of, I think it was 11 of them at the second stage, and then it used another one of them in the third stage. And I, I could probably do that. I could probably, instead of having those uh, LV-1s, uh, radials, the LV-1Rs I guess they are, uh, use the sustainer instead, one of them, one sustainer, and that would be much more like that one sounding rocket that uh, I really ought to look up the name of that one. Okay, well we're definitely going to get to, uh, well we'll just burn out the stage. We're definitely going to get to space and be able to do that experiment. So I'm probably going to light the second stage just to make sure it works. But then dump it, I guess. And then use the third stage to decelerate back down so that we don't come down too hard. Actually, I'm going to stop this stage now. We're, we're going way above board here. Um, and dump it. Okay, yeah, it looks like this stage is working just fine. The engines sound good. But what we really need to do is the experiment, so we're actually going to dump this and uh, just check the staging. Alright, so that's the staging. Now, did this decouple properly? Yes, it did. Alright, so that's good. We're in space now, so let's activate the data recorder. I think we have enough for that sample. Okay, so they all survived. Let's keep the data. And now is the trick of bringing it back down. Our attitude control is by RCS. I guess we should... No, I, I don't think we really need to extend the commutatron at this range. So I'm going to turn on RCS and make sure we're still going to be pointed roughly in this direction. Still wants to tilt over a bit. Those biological samples are heavy. But yeah, we'll have to tilt to make sure that we're going to come in retrograde. And then uh, try and slow down before we detach all of this stuff and uh, rely on the heat shield to bring us the rest of the way. If we don't slow down, there's a chance that the G-forces might uh, wreck this whole thing. I don't know what the G-force limit on this Bulbous fellow is, but I wouldn't bet it's very good. We can stop the data recording now. Okay, here we go back down. Can wait about here, and now I'm going to decelerate. Let's bring me back down faster than I can actually use these rockets. Bit annoying. Okay, well, nothing for it. I need to detach now.
Wait a minute. Uh-oh. The heat shield is buried inside the... Uh-oh, it's not covering it. Aha, I think I've discovered a problem. Um, <laughs> oh dear. Oh, interesting pattern that the debris makes. Uh, yeah, so the heat shield is probably not going to keep this safe. I'm probably going to hear a lot of things exploding now because they're all getting wrecked by the atmosphere. Oh, the G-forces on this are pretty high. Oh, now we have no connection. Oh, how wonderful. So, oh yeah, okay, this doesn't have an antenna on it. Ha. Huh. Okay, I think I've discovered a problem. I can't deploy the parachutes like this. I've put the antennas in the wrong place. Okay, well, I think I've learned something here. We are not going to be able to retrieve this. Wish this one had an internal antenna, but oh well. Uh, it's gonna go splat, but I can't uh, head back to the space center without reverting, so I'm just going to let it do its thing. But it survived at least, that's good. So it's just a matter of putting the antenna in the right place so that I can uh, order it to uh, deploy the parachutes. So after this, we'll be back to the VAB. Otherwise, the staging worked fine. And uh, once we do this, uh, I should try and actually get a satellite into orbit that can help us with communication. Though really, putting a communication satellite into orbit will be difficult because how is it going to maintain communication with the KSC? I have no idea. Now, so what we need is to have the this one attached to here. Huh. Can't really see how it could possibly tolerate the heat at all. What's its heat tolerance? 1200. Well, no, it's not going to survive at all. Uh, would it survive better if I put it at the top, do you suppose? Probably not. Whoa, that's a skewed angle. And of course the fairings would not like this. Hmm. How big is this one? Whoa, that's big. It's pretty big too. So we're gonna have to bring it all back down. There's nothing for it. You can't uh Yeah. Yeah. These little rockets will have to decelerate much more than they did. We have a bigger heat shield if we want it. But how to get it around the rockets? only reasonable way is to have this decoupling situation but well first of all let's get the rest of this oh I guess it just attaches that way huh it worked so I guess that's just how it's gonna be wish I had a really tiny antenna this snaps under high dynamic pressure so I don't know if I could put it on there and have it survive I don't think so Hmm, how do I bring this back down? Okay, well, to get the experiment back down, I think I'm just going to go with this. And uh, hopefully this will be enough. I'm going to reduce the size of this Montbone tank, because we really don't need that much. And we'll uh, also reinstall the... Well, actually, that's fine. Half a tank of that is still fine. Um, let's see. Ok, 
get that full. Let's have these four move down a bit. Hopefully they'll survive. I don't know how much protection the blade of shielding is. See, the heat does conduct, so if it protects the center tank, at least that'll prevent some of the heat from conducting. But I don't know if this is good enough to bring all this back down. We'll, we'll have to see, but I don't know any other way of uh, getting the ability to control those parachutes safely. Now let's see if staging is okay. Let's have it at the same stage here. So yeah, up and down again. Oh heck, uh, hmm. Should we try orbital? Wow, we got a lot of Delta V now. How did we get so much? All right, yeah, I guess we can try orbital. Let's let's try orbital. Heck, uh, I don't know if it's going to work one way or another either way, but uh, I'm hankering to get this thing into orbit. Let's uh, staging is all wrong as usual. Um, I I want to know if I I can maintain communication, the whether the 5,000 meter range on the automatic uh, antenna is enough so that I can keep these fairings on. If not, I might just have to drop the fairings for this mission. So let's try this uh, one more time. About this time, we're going to try for orbit. I think our best bet would probably be an extremely inclined orbit, so that uh, the rocket will still be above the KSC for an extended period of time. So we're going to be going up pretty, uh, 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 pretty steeply compared to what I would for any uh, any attempt at a circular orbit. Alright, so throttle is up, SAS is on, and launch. So, one more attempt at an orbital flight this time. And honestly, uh, just getting to orbit will be uh, very satisfying. Bringing it back down again, icing on the cake. The trick to getting into orbit is making sure that I maintain communication. Now, even if we're going to get into a high orbit and uh, an eccentric orbit, we still need to gain the necessary velocity. So, it's going to end up having to be somewhat horizontal one way or another. And so we can't... Uh, can't neglect that. Okay, first stage separation is good. Well, look at those amines go. Uh, hmm. Well, let's aim a little bit closer to our prograde vector. Oh, we don't have any control at all, do we? Huh. Well, this is fine. We'll just go like this. I don't have RCS. Uh, I have to open the fairing in order to get RCS, and if I try and open the fairing right now, uh, this part also drops off. Even if I try to restage this, the base will drop off. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, we're deviating. We're deviating. These corporal sustainers don't have adequate control. I'm gonna have to add RCS to this. Alright, change of plans. We don't have enough control in order to get this to orbit. It's gonna deviate too much. And uh, so we need to add some sort of RCS ports to this and add the uh, appropriate fuel, hydrazine or something like that, uh, in order to be able to control it. Um, yeah, so let's try and bring, uh, do the experiment and bring it back down. So we're not going to get into orbit, but we can still use this. Okay, uh, while we're at it, let's extend the very, very useful antenna. Uh, there we go. 
All right, let's uh, activate data recorder to the experiment. And now we seem to have a lot more delta V, so that hopefully will help us to slow down when necessary. Okay, let's get that sample. We can deactivate data recorder now. Let's just keep our uh, straining the hydrazine a bit, though. Ah, it's fine. Okay, stabilized. So there's the KSC. The question is really whether I can maintain communication with it for long enough. So let's uh, time. Oh, wow, look at how far away we're going. Okay, I think I should start decelerating now. And definitely want to decelerate in that. The key is whether I can pop the parachutes before the curvature of the planet means that I won't have line of sight. So that's another thing. I need to be able to see the KSC and of course the commutatron I've extended here is gonna snap in the atmosphere if I keep it on which I probably will I'll just keep it on as long as it's possible to use it I don't look like this configuration that's better oh probably the reason why we got more Delta V out of this stage is because I have less hydrazine Let's wait to for all of it to carry. Oh, and the heat shield was smaller. This is a smaller heat shield than I had up there before. You know what? What if I engage the parachutes now? Would they, de they deploy at the right time, do you suppose? I mean, obviously it would be a very bad thing if they were to deploy early. But I'm looking at this and I'm going, I don't think I'm going to be able to maintain communication for very long. So yeah, I'm going to pre-activate the parachutes, like this, and hope that everything goes alright. This wouldn't be possible on a normal re-entry uh, from orbit, but because we are short of orbit and we're using these to decelerate, it's possible now. It's possible that the heat won't be uh, so extreme that it would hurt the parachutes when we, when we get to 20k-ish when they deploy. Yeah, we're totally gonna lose communication here. You can see the horizon issue. Yep, there's the lack of connection. So let's hope the parachutes work now. And work without, like, being harmed. Ooh, something blew up. Something else blew up. G-forces. Oh, there goes the parachutes. Oh, well, there goes that idea. Let's see how much of this actually survives. Uh, the stuff on the center, I suppose? Oh, great. If only it still had parachutes. So, RCS on the second stage will probably help. And... 
And I'm going to add an antenna on the second stage. But I don't see how that's going to really help, actually. Because uh, what's hap going to happen is that once we switch to the third stage, we'll lose connection. If we could get into orbit on the second stage, it'd work. If this was just uh, a return stage, it'd work. Uh, I've pondered, by the way, I, uh, some some of you would probably think of it too, that maybe I could just use RCS on this stage and skip the LV1Rs altogether. So that is something I've thought about, but I don't know. Uh, I'll, uh, I'm not too sure that's a good idea. Alright, so back to the VAV. So the trick is we need to get into orbit on the second stage. And we also, and you know, we've got about we're about a thousand delta V short of that and we also need to have communication on the second stage so let's add a commutatron just need an RCS block or four right around the center should help but let's not have it at the same place as the antennae antenna okay um, how much hydrazine should I pump into this let's see that's gonna reduce the delta V of it though. Oh, and the, probably the hydrazine at the top will start depleting too. Hmm. Well, it seems we uh, like we have some spare capacity that I wasn't using here, but this tank doesn't allow for hydrazine. So we're actually gonna have to add a. Oh, this problem again. Oh, how funny. I can't let go of it. And that clicking subassembly has just got rid of it. So, I'm going to reload this. Now, which of these allows for hydrazine? This one does. Super stretchy service module. Indeed. Oh no, don't attach to that. It's fine. And uh, let's see, using He is oh, but it only extends to 0.625. Oh, that's a bit annoying. But you know, um, I think the hydrazine actually goes between stages anyway. So these would still work even if uh, uh, drawing hydrazine from up here would it still work? I don't think I should do that though. That seems sketchy. Hmm. Do we have a larger tank that can take the hydrazine? No, nope, looks like the only kind of super stretchy service module that can take hydrazine is this this size. But it can be smaller. I've got an idea. Whoa, no, I don't want far. Um So, we can do something like this. Oh, I know it looks horrible. Hold on a sec. Uh, let's see if we can get... Uh, how small of a cone can we get? Those aren't very small cones. Oh, well. Hmm. Hold on. Let's get these really, really small. Sort of like that. And then... Actually, maybe I should do this some other way. But I want to get one of these conic fuel tanks on top of them. Ah, uh, yeah, I need to do it some other way. Um, I need to mount it on top of something. Or do we have side decouplers yet? Oh, yes, we do. Okay. Let's do that. I think we can resize these. Yeah, yeah, we can resize these off to the side here. All right. So what I want is yeah, pointy and slim and short. 
That's the idea. Still not good enough. Should be able to attach now. Definitely should be able to attach now. <laughs> what the heck? Come on. Okay, well, here. When symmetry doesn't work, symmetry doesn't work. Alright, fine. Oh, and then it does this sort of thing. Now, explain that to me. This is just trying to make things more difficult for me, isn't it? Okay, well, that's fine. Don't care. Don't need to worry about that. We've got one. As long as we've got one, we have four. Okay, so that's what I wanted. That's fine. Much as this is unsightly, uh, I, I don't think, strictly speaking, I need to do that fuel line thing, but let's just make sure. And now, I can load this up with hydrazine. That's a lot of hydrazine. Um, let's say 25 out of 25. Oh, I, I don't even have to do that. I can just make them shorter. Okay, not in this view. Okay. Very interesting work. Oh, uh, obviously we need some actual RCS ports. And why don't we actually sneak them underneath those cones for aerodynamic happiness. What we need is for this stage to be smaller. And that will boost the overall delta V of the second stage. Well, we're getting there. You can see uh, we've got uh, 9,000 delta V here now. Okay. Let's close this part up. And what we really need to extend is probably here. At some point, the curvature of the Earth is still going to make it impossible to maintain communication with that. The key is whether I can do this burn quickly enough with so little thrust to weight ratio, with so little thrust. It's possible that I might want actually nine of the corporal sustainers on here. Let's see. They're not that heavy. But I think they'd be too close together. Okay, well that's nine of them. Oh, it reduces the delta V by, by a lot, doesn't it? Oh, forget that. Well, that will give me 9,500 on the spot. Right? No, no, no. Is that right? No, 9,400. Well, maybe we can make do with 9,400. Let's give it a little bit more. And uh, I was reminded by Nathan Kell to make sure that I uh, update the tanks whenever I stretch it like this. So let's just remove these. And that one needs the kerosene. And this one remove all tanks. And this one uses the means. Okay, yeah, that's enough. Let's make sure the hydrazine looks fine. It does. Okay. This is very much different from what we've been launching. So let's call it uh, Stay Put Nick 3. And once we're in space, I have to remember to extend that. Actually, that seems like something I should action group. This isn't really the best place for these little guys, is it? I'm gonna keep it that way for now. If it doesn't work, I'll fix it later.
So I'm gonna toggle that using action group one. Okay, this looks fine. All right, let's try this again, folks. Back out to launch pad and let's try and get into orbit this time. All right, SAS on, throttle is up, and launch. Okay, I think we should be safe to extend the antenna now, but let's wait a little bit. Oh, there's the G-forces. Okay. Alright, now let's extend the antenna. And it's good. It's good. And I need the RCS. Otherwise, oh, the RCS at the top is also blowing. Didn't really want that. Problem is, I don't think we're gonna get quite into orbit on this stage. Looking at the sum of the stage delta V and our current surface delta V, well, if you look at the orbit one, we need 7.7 .7 at least, 7,700 meters per second. If you sum those two together, you don't get that. And, you know what, I should have action grouped the stupid antenna on that stage. That's what I should have done. If I had action grouped the antenna on that stage, I could extend it even while the cone is on. Ah, uh, now that would have solved the problem. Okay, yeah, well, that's, that's the next thing I'm gonna do. Let's see how the balance of things works out here, uh, especially I want to see how much hydrazine I have left at the top after I burn through this stage. And maybe I don't need so much hydrazine down here. So if I can reduce the amount of hydrazine I carry down here because it's not using all of it, then I can uh, uh, reduce that hydrazine and uh, save some weight. Also, I want to make sure that we do maintain connection through the second stage. That would be helpful. Oh, we've got a little bit of lag here. Oh, okay, there we go. Uh, we're actually going down, aren't we? Let's not do such things. You know what it occurs to me? I should be able to detach one of these. Just... Aha! 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 Okay, okay. Uh, but it's the wrong one. <laughs> There's four of them. The question is where the where the antenna is. Okay, it's on this side. Yes. All right. Well, okay. So we've got a chance here.
if I jettison this other fairing here, this will decouple. It's just an automatic thing. And, oh, we've lost connection. Uh, so all that effort to get that extended, it turns out that the second stage, we won't maintain connection through it. And if we don't maintain connection through it, well, you see the result, we're going to fall back in the atmosphere anyway. So we can't maintain connection through the whole thing. The curvature of the planet is such that we uh, fell below the horizon, I suppose. Okay, well, uh, let's make some changes, including action grouping that antenna. And then try a higher orbit. Reduce the size of this tank, increase the size of that tank, because as long as we can extend that antenna, uh, we should be fine to stage, actually. Yeah, okay, one more time, back to the VAB. So what I want to do is action group this antenna as two. So the first one is one, the second one is two. Alright. And then... We reduce the strain on this stage and increase the burden on this stage. And then I'll add the fuels back. Okay, so that's our new configuration. Looks, that looks fair. Um, these RCS ports are now way too close to these tanks. So let's just move the tanks up. Four of them. Obviously I'm adding four because I, I am smoothing out the RCS situation. I, I want them to actually shield the RCS ports. Um, right. Okay, it uh, looks all good to me. Okay, once more feeling. Let's call this Stay Putnik 4. Alright, it's deja vu all, all over again. We've got SAS on, throttle up. And, well, let's see what happens. And launch. I think instead of uh, being named Corporal, the actual rockets that had the 6.7 kilonewton thrust that were used on that sounding rocket were actually called the Sergeants. I'm just digging back into my memory here. Okay, we can extend that uh, antenna 1 and antenna 2. Let me just... Oh, there's that G-force. Antenna 1 is good, Antenna 2, uh, RCS please, thank you. Uh, antenna 2 is sort of poking out of the fairing, so at least we can verify that it's on. So yeah, high eccentric orbit, so that means our apoapsis is going to be quite high. Okay, so here we go. Will we maintain connection once we uh, separate the second stage? Yep, we're good. We don't have too much hydrazine though. But we still need to keep it on. <laughs> uh, our orientation requires that these do not uh, orient. They don't gimbal. Now obviously, this is probably not going to survive re-entry. 
Unless we're extraordinarily lucky. I mean, uh, to have it survive re-entry, what we really need is for the heat shield to cover everything. And I don't know how to place the rockets and have the heat shield cover everything, so it's tricky business. Or I need to figure out how to mount an antenna on the top so that I can order the parachutes to open after I've decoupled the probe part. So those are my considerations going forward. But I think we can at least get Sputnik. Remember, Sputnik I don't think was recovered. I don't think it was recovered, so... So we'll at least get Sputnik done. Uh-oh. Uh we don't have any more hydrazine. Oh, nuts. Um, okay. So this just got much more complicated. We ran out of hydrazine because uh, because we were burning hydrazine even when the fairing was on from this stage. It was supposed to have 15, but we only ended up with 5. Oh, uh, I don't really need to. Nope, this is all the last acts of a desperate man here. Uh, <laughs> Oh, here we go again. All right. I'm not... I don't want to build a bigger rocket here. That's the thing. And, well, we've got more technology... We've got uh, 50 science to spend, and I could buy some something that could help. But I don't want to build anything bigger. I think this should work. I just need to rethink this quite a lot. And uh, this, this setup is clearly not working out for me. I need to come up with something better than this. Something that's properly heat shielded and has an antenna that will maintain connection. I don't need to be bringing all this back. Yeah, so let me rethink the state putnik design that I've been using. And yeah, I mean, it really needs to be rethought from scratch. Uh, we, uh, I stopped burning because there's no way we would be able to get into orbit, and there's something wrong here. Um, perhaps my trajectory was bad, even though I was close to the prograde vector, it didn't seem like it was getting me delta v. Maybe I should have been more uh, pointed towards the horizon, or maybe I'm just un uh, estimating the amount that needs to get into orbit. Because I've got this high orbit, uh, it's possible that at this height I don't need to be going as fast, so that's true. All right. Well, um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll leave it at this. So um, I've got some work to do ahead of me. Oh, well, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.